Hallo. 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 Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. five. Three, two, one. Zero. Three, two, Start. one. <laughs> Put your phone away. I am using it for the podcast. No. I'm having. I have something prepared. I'm using it. I'm looking at Instagram. I'm not on Instagram. Liking cat videos and I rat don't like videos. Cat videos. And... Rat videos. <laughs> and dog videos. Welcome back, people of Earth and Mars and Moon and stuff, wherever you are listening to this program <laughs> that we bring from our basement to you guys. Yes. We're back. We're back. New episode of Hello, I'm Listening. Indeed. It's still weird to say that. Yep. Yep. I mean, after over 80 translating love episodes yeah but thanks for the love on the last episode uh, with shannon mm -hmm. which was a fun one um and we hope she will be back in another time maybe with a more fun topic <laughs> <laughs> we've covered more serious topics with her yeah so maybe we'll have her back for a new at some point with for like a more fun episode Although I think that it just because they're the topics aren't light, it's still a fun episode in the sense that it was it's a fun episode. No, but that's what and I it's mean. It's nice maybe. to talk to her, right? So. But maybe for like a more uplifting topic, sure. Like poop. Yeah. I mean, I kind of want to have an episode about poop. We should, and I'm actually being serious. Yeah, we should, but. What if we talk about brushing your anus teeth? <laughs> teeth. <laughs> no. Don't uh, say nobody brushes their anus. You don't know what everybody does. So if you brushed or are brushing your anus, <laughs> then please, please contact out. us and reach out and we'll talk about it. Yeah. I'm interested. <laughs> Also, what kind of brush would you use for that? Like a hairbrush? No, like, like a, a toothbrush. toothbrush, but like a soft, the soft tip, blah, blah, the soft tip toothbrushes. Your mom just like threw something on the floor. Something just fell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but today we're not talking about poop and brushes and <laughs> anal, anal brushes. <laughs> it's not a thing. I bet it's a thing. No, it's not. We are talk. What are we talking about today? We're talking about coming of age, like the genre of film, mm -hmm. and how realistic or unrealistic it is in terms of like actually coming of age. So, coming of age. What it, is it, and it, why it, is it here, yeah, and right. what does it want, and what it is for? Um, absolutely nothing. <laughs> So coming of age is usually a young person's transition from being a child to being an adult. Usually, isn't it always? No. It continues through adolescence. The specific age at which is this transition takes place varies between societies. And technically, you could have a coming of age movie that starts at 40. Really? Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. genre. So you can basically put the idea of, hey, this person going through something like a midlife crisis yeah exactly oh yeah i see so but we are talking about the classic uh coming of age story so basically usually younger people mm -hmm. teens high school high schoolers who are you know going through a tough phase high school is such a serious thing anything. these problems matter <laughs> yeah um Oh, man. I just lost the train. You missed your train? I missed my train. What is your favorite coming of age movie? That's too hard of a question. No, it's not. I mean, I, have one. I really like Perks of Being a Wallflower. That's a great one. But I like the book better. I have not read the book. Oh, it's fantastic. I don't care. 
um, that book sparked my love of reading at an adult age because I didn't like reading when I was younger. And then I read yeah, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Read. You couldn't and then, read. You're like, and then I read Perks of Being a Wallflower and I had this newfound love of reading and I owe it all to that book. Wow. Yeah. Great story, great, Mark. Great story. I My favorite coming of age movie is The Way, Way Back. Mm, that's a good one too. Just simply because how they convey the feeling of endless summer. Even yeah. though it's not endless. Yeah. And everybody can relate at something in that story. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, can I just list off a couple of coming of age yeah. movies so people can relate to it in case they haven't seen those two? Yeah. So movies like The Graduate. Great movie. And 80, you'll also see the difference between how I think it's interesting looking at 82? the list. What was The Graduate? Um. 80, uh, 67. What are you talking oh, about? 67. 82. Wow. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but it's interesting how people, like how it changes throughout the years of what yeah, coming yeah, sure. of age is. Sure. So like The Graduate is one, The Breakfast Club. Oh, great movie. American Beauty. Great movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Classic. Yes. Classic. Karate Kid. Yeah. Um, 10 Things I Hate About You. One of my favorite movies. I wouldn't consider that a classic uh, coming of age movie, but it's, it's still coming of age. It's movie. it's more yeah sure it is in the core it is but yeah. it's it's more centered about the high school experience. It's yeah. not about the transition mm -hmm. from being there to mm -hmm. being you know another fantastic. If you have not seen it, go see it right now. Rushmore. Yeah. Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson classic. Fantastic. Movie. Um, the Princess Diaries is in this list. Yeah, I don't know if I would count that to that. I would count it. I don't know if I would. I would count it. <laughs> Napoleon Dynamite is in this list. Yeah, I would not count that <laughs> I either. I wouldn't count that one. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But yeah, that's just a short list. That's funny. There are like major ones missing. Yeah. Where did you get that list? I just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> and you took the first list without like even checking it? And I didn't click on a link. It's just from Google as oh, advertised. Yeah. Fuck that. As coming Fuck of that. age. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you some more. <laughs> because just because. This entire episode will be just a list nah, of nah, movies. Nah, 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 nah. I'll just pick some out that are like really, really good and people should have seen. Okay. The thing is, with coming of age movies especially in a certain age you learn a lot especially because you yourself go through so many emotions and you know mm -hmm. growing up and hormones and changing and transitioning from like a school setting into maybe work or mm -hmm. university and stuff so there's a lot of things going on so super bad for example is a great example where to but that's also the high school experience yeah, at the core though it's about two friends who are the best friends and who were the best friends forever and they are at the transitioning phase where he goes off to college but he yeah. goes off to a different college and they have to accept that even though they go off to different colleges and their life might change they're still friends and they can make it work with that logic though you could say napoleon dynamite is a coming of age because they're also in high school transitioning into yeah, the next the, phase of their life yeah i mean sure <laughs> but the overall change in the character and the realization that hey my life is going to change but my friends i can still be friends with them is not as massive or even the the change in the character itself he's still the fucking idiot that he is at the beginning <laughs> moonlight great movie and that movie is specifically good because it's transitioned through four, uh, three different stages of mm -hmm. his life so you don't only see the young age, but you see the teenage or young adult and then older mm -hmm. adult age. Um, so that's a great one. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom, great movie. Mm -hmm. Also Wes Anderson. Lady Bird won an Oscar from 2017. Great girl. Mean Girls. That was on my list too, but I didn't say oh, it. Oh, you didn't say it. Love, Simon. A great classic. movie. Classic. 2018, it's about a gay guy who basically was outed in school and yeah. has to deal with the... The, the shit show that's going on. 
Uh, Juno. I mean, Juno's great. That's a great movie. And tons more. So I don't want to go with oh, this one. The Edge of 17. I was just going to say, what is the one? That's what I was thinking of. Easy A. Easy yeah. A is a great one, too. I mean, it's packed with a lot of reference, but still a great movie. Call Me By Your Name. Mm. I mean, oh. I just, Book smart. I, I love the genre so much. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just, oh my, there's not many coming of age movies that I don't love. I just, I love the genre and I love, you feel so connected to those characters. Yeah, they're relatable. Yeah. The yeah. one thing I will say, so let's maybe just start with Perks. Perks, perks of, of Being, being a, a Wallflower. wallflower. Yeah. Um, a 2012 Based on a movie. book. Based on a book. I'll just read the short synopsis. Charlie, a 15-year-old introvert, enters high school and is nervous about his new life. When he befriends his seniors, he learns to cope with his friend's suicide and his, I can never say this word, tumultuous past. Tumultuous. Um, yeah. The one thing that I will say about coming of age that I feel like in movies is less realistic than in actual life is a lot of coming of age movies have a very serious trauma. Like they're they're surrounded sure. or or the base of the movie. I mean, in the core is kind of central. Like the the trauma is the center of a lot. Yeah. And it, but, I mean, obviously, it depends. If you take uh, Perks of Peeling Wallfried, that's a drama. So sure. you have to have some sort of very dramatic or or you know cataclysmic ex mm -hmm. experience or things that happened or happens to the mm -hmm. main character sure but if you look at um, mean girls for example yeah that's a well, very it's funny but it's a relatable it's a comedy yeah it's it's a comedy so it, obviously it's different but that's why i like the way way back so much because there's still this relatable thing about not to know, say that perks is not relatable because no, no, there are definitely people but who go it's that dark trauma. and the main topic is very dark yeah it's totally realistic it could happen it happened probably to people sure. but um the way we back is light more lighthearted. but there's still this dramatic event that especially as a teenager or kid mm -hmm. you you know when i spoiler alert when your parents get divorced mm -hmm. and they might have like new love interests or friends or you know mm -hmm. That might shatter a lot of your um, world and can I mean, be hard I think to that with. one specifically is so relatable because a lot of people's parents are divorced right. and a lot of them get divorced when kids are around right. that age. Right. So I think that's, it's a super relatable story in general. And it does a really good job of showing like the combination of teenage angst mm -hmm. plus just being so angry at the situation. Yeah. And kind of also you tend to side with one parent more than the other. Yeah. It it does a really good job of portraying yeah. the emotions of that. And with that also the the fact that, you know, you wanna especially at that time you wanna find your voice, you wanna find your mm -hmm. um way to I don't know. I mean you're discovering who you are. Yes, right. You discovering who you are and you try to find who you are in this world and who your friends are or your peers mm -hmm. and are maybe a little awkward because you don't know how to act. Mm -hmm. You are not maybe like this big football guy or this, um, you know, dressed up doll like woman in like a, <laughs> in like a clique, you know, did your, did, did the girls at your school dress like dolls? Nah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. You know, I'm painting a picture. They all come to school looking like Raggedy Ann. Yeah. <laughs> no, like the one doll that eats the food. <laughs> the Cabbage Patch Kid. Cabbage. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> you just put a carrot stick in her mouth and she's like, nom, nom. And and nobody knows her, what you're talking about, right? And it lands in her... Uh, backpack. Backpack. <laughs> yeah, there was this Cabbage Patch Kid that it's came out that had like a chewing function <laughs> and she had a little backpack the video is and so good. 
and it came the doll came with like little food things that you could feed her and you would feed her and she'd chew it and then it would just go in her backpack <laughs> it looks so stupid it looks so horribly stupid it's really but it's weird, funny yeah. i had a cabbage patch kid but yeah. not a chewing one no but i think that's also i mean in perks it's the same you know he's like kind of lost mm -hmm. he doesn't know where he does he where he belongs he has mm -hmm. all this underlying anxiety and depressed feelings and emotions that he doesn't know what to do with mm -hmm. and so he finds those people who he can finally be himself and just be free and and i think in that sense it's super relatable because i think there are many people especially at that age who they don't know where they fit i mean nobody they, does they don't know do i fit with this group or sometimes they're in a certain group but they don't feel like they fit there and I think it's you... really hard to find your people i right. think in high school I mean, sure, it's the best thing if you have like a best friend and you can be with them and them like you can be your, your yourself around mm -hmm. them. But I think in the end, everybody is faking it because who nobody knows how or what he is at that point. We're the trying thing to is, figure it out. I think some out. people actually do. Yeah, but, but I, I think, think it's, it's a really small percentage. I think so too. And so in the end, I mean, don't be an asshole, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Don't be mean to people because everybody's trying to find it their mm -hmm. way. Yeah. And also say gay. Say gay. Say gay. Um, trying to think of another good example. I mean, the show, there's also a lot of shows that are yep. involving that coming of age theme. Like Sex Education is yeah. one of my Love favorite. Victor, Love Victor show. is from the people of Love, Simon. Yeah. Yep. But... I think sex education is so brilliantly made. Yeah. Because it's so in tune with like I feel like people in that age are the people writing the show. <laughs> because it's just like it so accurately portrays I mean people who write the show obviously went for all the shit. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So um but and, they're writing it in such a way that it fits so well with the times that we're living in too. So it's sure. not necessarily the time sure. that they, they were living a, in. They do a great job yeah. in research and everything. Uh, but yeah, that's a great, great example. Also, the fact that sex is more talked about these days and especially in certain movies and series mm -hmm. where you deal with older kids or mm -hmm. older teenagers. Whereas like when we, when, at least when I grew up, talking about sex was so taboo. It was like, you right. don't talk about right. it. You don't say vagina. You don't say penis mm -hmm. because they're dirty <laughs> words. <laughs> penis. And even if you were in health class and you had a question, if you yeah. said penis or vagina, the rest yeah, of the class is like, <laughs> she's a penis, <laughs> you whore. <laughs> How does she know what that is? Yeah. <laughs> Did you have one in your mouth last night, you whore? <laughs> <laughs> so don't do that. <laughs> but it's that's why I love that show so much because it I think it helps, especially if there are teenagers watching that show. Yeah. I think it helps it to feel less taboo. It helps it to feel more normal to yeah. have questions and ask those questions and talk about these things that are completely human and natural yeah and so that's the other reason why i just love that that genre so much because i feel like it opens up conversation for I agree. I agree. younger people who are going through those things i agree yeah like i would watch sex education with my kids if there is to like age, yeah. open up the dialogue you know where it's in a less awkward mm. setting also the fact i don't know i mean if you look at uh, movies that came out like a couple of years, like 10, 15 years ago, coming of age movies, or even 80s, 70s, 90s. They are not, I mean, they're great on their own, but they're not talking about all the shit that it's actually relevant in terms of no, like... I mean, look at The Graduate. <laughs> no, sure. <laughs> but, but like in terms of um, gender identity, for example, mm -hmm. that's something that has not been a big issue mm -hmm. or a big topic uh, being discussed in those uh, coming of age movies and mm -hmm. series, and so that's also a big thing that's becoming more and more prevalent and and, and important, and speaks to way more people now because mm -hmm. people finally see 
uh, you know, a woman who wants to be a, a boy or a man yeah. and, and vice versa or, or people who don't feel like anything, mm -hmm. you know, who don't mm -hmm. feel to be included. They don't fit in any of those right. boxes. Right. Yeah. So I think that's why the genre, it, It's keeps evolving. Being, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That and, and keeps being re uh, relevant. Yeah. I mean, Moxie was another mm -hmm. great, great It's on movie. Netflix. That's a great movie. But that is, I mean, that is not about like gender identity, but it's more about like... Uh, like fem uh, female empowerment yeah. and fighting the system and fighting the patriarchy. But yeah. in a high school setting, which is also something that I wish I could have done more of when I was that age. Yeah. I mean, it all starts in in education. Mm -hmm. it, it depends how you, you know, teach peop uh, young people what is right and what is wrong and what you should fight and stand for. And, yeah. and movies like that are so important that to, to carry that voice. Yeah. Yeah. So let's ask that last question. How... Um, like how realistic are those depiction of 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 uh, coming of age in like recent movies and series? You know, going into the podcast, I was prepared to say that they're exaggerated forms of reality, but the more we talk about it, the more I take want to take that back. Where I think they're take very realistic. <laughs> I think they're very realistic because. Even there are some movies where I'm watching them and I'm like, this is like I'm watching my high school years unfold. Even Harry Potter? Yeah, obviously. What's a realistic? I'm a wizard. <laughs> oh, I'm a wizard. Sorry. Um, but I mean, obviously, like, I mean, that's a good example. There there are fantasy, uh, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Genres. Adaptations, Adaptations yeah. of, of coming of age. But the ones that aren't that <laughs> i think they're super realistic and i think that they very well they do a good job of depicting what it feels like to be that age yeah and i think that that's really cool and realistic yeah what do you also, think also i agree i mean i totally agree um and i would have never said that those movies are exaggerated or uh fantasy even I think yeah, but if you, if you use the Harry Potter reference, and technically Harry Potter's kind of it is coming a coming of, of age. age, but it's a it's a bad version of coming age because it's not about that. Yeah, yeah. He grows, but it's not about. It's never about that. Sure. Yeah, but you defined coming of, of age as like it, it would fit into how you defined no, it. It is. It totally is one. No, totally. But at the it that's not what Harry Potter about. Uh, Harry Potter is about. It's about mm -hmm. his story about Voldemort. And sure, he's growing up as a person, whatever, but that's not the main thing about the mm. whole story. So I would not count Terry Potter as a great coming of age mm -hmm. uh, ex example. But uh, I think that coming of age nowadays are more realistic yeah. than back in the day, simply because they're talking about more topics that are actually relevant to people. Mm -hmm. And also, in a lot of ways, those movies are still... I love coming of age, but in a lot of ways, they could still do more. Mm -hmm. Because especially uh, uh, American movies and series are still not as bold. Mm -hmm. Like if you look at sex education, that is a very bold version of that. Yeah, But it's not from the US, it's from the UK. Mm -hmm. And we in Europe tend to be more bold about that stuff and show more stuff and talk about more stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's something that is missing from the genre in the U.S. movies. Yeah, we're pretty prude in yeah. the U.S. I mean, like the certain studios like A24 or um, other indie studios mm -hmm. are doing more towards that. But in the like typical Hollywood mainstream movies, you don't see that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sad. I would also like to see more um, black representation in... Yeah coming yeah. of age movies yeah. i think it's becoming more of a thing to which is great to um be more representative of the lgbtq plus community mm -hmm. which is fantastic as it should be but i think there also ne needs to be more 
black representation and mm-hmm. what it's like being a black teenager mm-hmm. in a high school where like my high school for example we did have a lot Boys of diversity but still the ratio was that that it was i know uncomfortable mm-hmm. for there were a lot of situations where it was probably very difficult to be a black student at that school mm-hmm. and i think that's the case in a lot of schools yeah so I think that would that's something for me that's missing from the genre that I feel like there's not enough representation. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get that, and yeah, that I and that's I think the good thing about it because it's evolving and and there are so many versions of it and still not enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's it. I don't have anything more to say. We're not listening anymore. <laughs> so the episode's over. Bye, I stopped listening. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. Is Indeed. there something else you want to say? Um, like and follow. I don't think it's subscribe anymore. I think that's an outdated term now. I think like and the follow. cool kids are saying follow. Yep. So like and follow the podcast. And rate the podcast. Um, you can rate possible. the podcast on Apple Podcasts. And Spotify now. And Spotify now. Yeah, you can rate the podcast on Spotify now. That would be great. Mm. Um, and also let us know what you think about the whole thing. If you have something to say, uh, say it. Send us, say, yeah. Send us an email or a voice message on anchor.fm yeah. or Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And again, if you send us a voice message on our anchor page, we can include it. We here. can literally play it on the podcast, so you will be featured on the podcast. Yeah, and we will be able to answer your question live and on the air. Exciting! <laughs> Do it now. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye.